Welcome to Green Time. I'm host Don Fitz. Uh, this episode, we're going to be talking about family farm action. And with me, I have a guest, Wes Schumeyer, who is uh, who is both with Food for America, Missouri's Food for America, yes. president of that. Okay. And also with a group called Family Farm Action. Exactly. Okay. Could you tell us a little bit about what Family Farm Action is and why Missouri would need a group called Family Farm Action. Yeah, actually uh, a group of us, former Lieutenant Governor, myself, and some individuals from uh, Texas, Oklahoma, uh, Washington, D.C., uh, mm. have come together and created what's called a C4. As we know, we have many good C3 uh, mm. advocacy groups mm. that advocate for great Family Farm Action, or great action and great issues, but mm. they're, they're limited to education and, and and, and, and those type of things, they cannot be involved in the political arena. So, so a C4 can be involved in the political arena. Absolutely. So you want, that's what you want to do is to lobby and pressure and to help write legislation. Absolutely. We need, uh, we found that the, the, what we believe and the things that Family Farm Action and many of these C3 stand for, uh, they, they poll off the charts. Mm. Uh, but what we've also found is what we call big ag or the industrial ag machine just outspends us and just has some of those validators in the rural you areas. You mean Big Ag has more money than the family farmer? Uh, Big Ag has a lot more money than <laughs> we as family farmers. And we found that they overwhelm the messaging mm -hmm. of many of these C3 groups. And mm -hmm. we're not here to replace any of the C3 groups, but to validate them and them, them validate our messaging and to bring some political muscle and to bring some polling and to bring some, uh, some real, a real political force to the beliefs that we have about good food policy, about what farmers and, mm. and rural communities need to thrive and survive. Okay, one of the issues that you pointed out to me was a farmer's bill of rights. Absolutely. What, what sort of things well, are covered in a yeah, farmer's we, bill? Yeah, we certainly believe in several things that farmers ought to have uh, access to open, mm. free, and competitive markets. I think when we look at what's happened in, in each one of the animal sectors, we have Th three companies controlling 80% of the beef market. That's amazing. Uh, w w we've watched here e in Missouri itself uh, in the last couple of years. We watched our legislature grant foreign corporations the opportunity to buy our farmland. Now we watch Smithfield be bought out by Shineway, WH Group, a uh, Chinese government-controlled corporation. They now own one in every four pork chops produced in this country. I think we ought to understand that the largest owner of beef in this country is a foreign-owned government corporation, JBS. The largest owner of poultry is a foreign corporation. So many of the people in the good food movement are, we believe that farmers have a right, should have a right to feed their neighbors. These corporations draw that they're all that ability for farmers to do that away from. We've lost local processing in that process. And so it so can, there's a lot of jobs besides just growing the food that are part of farming. Absolutely. And, and mm -hmm. it's about feeding our neighbors. And I think one of the very interesting things, we look at Missouri, mm -hmm. uh, where we, we're in the breadbasket of the United States of America, and we have one of the populations in the country of most food insecure. So if the corporate model of feeding the world would work, Mm -hmm. It should work here. And, and to find the food insecurity here, obviously, this model is not working. And, and right now, there is enough. There is a surplus of all these commodities. And so what is the reason it's not getting to people? Yeah, I've never have figured out why Missouri has to import garlic and tomatoes. Do they grow in Missouri? We absolutely used to be the leader in processing tomatoes. In Springfield, Missouri, there used to be a cannery there. Mm. We were one of the leaders. Uh, we just found that the corporate model mm. did not lend to that. You know, I, and when you look at efficiencies, uh, is, is the efficiencies that they search for is the efficiencies to answer to a board member and to Wall Street. You know, efficiencies ought to be about communities, and efficiencies ought to be about how how we re interact in the communities because mm. communities take people, mm. and and it is a, uh, for, as some people would say a righteous fight, I believe, to mm. protect family farmers, to protect rural communities, to keep that wealth in communities because. Yeah, I think you first have to understand if you're going to bring young people back to the farm, mm. you have to bring wealth back into a community. And what these vertical integrators do is they, they ex extract wealth from rural communities 
and take that elsewhere. No, the vertical integrator, I, do I have it right? That's a business that owns the entire process. They own the process of, of uh, growing the corn. They own the process of uh, transporting the corn. They own the process of modifying the corn so that it can be eaten. Absolutely, like they own the pig from the baby pig to the pork chop. Right. Um, and, and so, you know, we, we, we're very mindful that uh, that's one of the things that we're very mindful about the uh, Packers and Stockyards Act that used mm. to protect farmers in mm. the marketplace. And now there is such a, a demand that if someone's harmed in this mm. process and being abused, uh, the Justice Department has said you not only have to prove that you've been hurt in the process, but you have to prove that the world market <laughs> has been hurt. Now, I don't know any farmer within the USA, mm. and, these, and most of these, a lot of these are poultry growers. They're in right. a, tournament, a tournament process where they compete against their neighbors. Uh, they're, they're strapped with a, a load of debt. Uh, they've, they've mortgaged their homes and their houses, and they have no ability to negotiate with the integrator. And once they're strapped in, 70% of the poultry growers are living below the poverty line. Right. And so, so we believe that these folks ought to have a fair shake, that they should have a way to uh, uh, voice their concerns and their complaints without having to prove that the world's been harmed. Our markets have been harmed. Mm -hmm. And their markets have been harmed. And so uh, we just believe that farmers ought to have that right. We believe uh, uh, certainly that uh, we ought to have a right to fair capital, right. that we ought to have that people, uh, not, not only is all this good for uh, 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 we as producers, but it's about consumers that fair labeling. You know, our, our Congress... You should, our con you should know what's in the food. Yeah, our and you, Congress... And you shouldn't have to, have to go to a website to find out what's in the food. Missouri was a leader in this in the late 90s, and we passed mm -hmm. country of origin labeling for the state of Missouri. Right. Uh, several other states followed our lead. Uh, the, the, at the national level, they implemented country of origin mm -hmm. labeling. And one of the things that we have a problem with, problem with is a checkoff. The, na the group NCBA which only represents 4% of the farmers, I have to pay a check off or a dollar ahead for every time I sell a calf. And I'm paying them. That money will go to them. And they, they worked with the Canadian government through the WTO, sued the United States hmm. for country of origin label, for us labeling our production so our consumers would know what's in our food. So, th so basically, Big Ag does not Big want... Big Ag, the Packers they, they do not want this. They don't want people to know that this Absolutely. pork chop came from here. They don't want people to know that this head of lettuce came from there. Right. And okay. what, what NCBA wants is to be able to import Canadian or Mexican or, for, for that matter, any other country, process, further process it in our country, co-mingle it with our American raised beef, and put a USDA label on it. Okay. And, and I think the, probably the most ironic and stark uh, uh, example I can give you is that if you go to the store and you want to buy a dog bone for your dog, mm -hmm. it has to have, it has to have the country of origin label on that <laughs> bone. But if you go to the store and want to buy a hamburger for your children, yeah, it does not. That's amazing. And, and we had that, and we're certainly urging our Congress to look this over because this is one of the things Family Farm Action has known. It polls off the charts. Ninety percent of consumers that know and producers that know about this, when that law was, was taken away from us, we lost 50 percent on our price of beef at the farm gate, and consumers got no advantage at the market. Wes, I want to change gears and talk yep. about an issue, issue which became hot in uh, uh, 2017. In 2015, uh, Monsanto started marketing a product called Dicamba with Dic and, and, and sold Dicamba-resistant cotton. Could you tell us, and then it got in the news a whole lot in 2017, could you tell us a little bit about what di Dicamba is? What, what's, what's, the chem what's the chemistry of Dicamba? Dicamba is a new form of what, what we used to call 2,4-D. And or, do, or dachshund, or, yeah, or what, what, was, right. what was sprayed in Vietnam that, that gave right. so many veterans all sorts of uh, diseases and, and cancers. Absolutely, mm. and it's a chemical that is uh, very adapted to the killing of specific broadleaves, mm -hmm. and there is certainly a problem in a lot of farmers' field with what we call water hemp and mare's tail and some of those what would be very prohibitive to uh, uh, you know, profitable yields. Uh, uh, and, the, and the chemical, the chemistry, does work quite well. Um, no, nobody says that the chemical no, doesn't destroy weeds. No, nobody's questioning it. It, 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 just, it, it uh, does kill weeds. It just really doesn't know where to work well at is mm -hmm. the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think that uh, 
you know, we saw in 2016 where the seeds, the technology that was in the seed was released into the market. And I think it's terribly irresponsible of the holder of that patent, whether it be Monsanto or Dow, to release uh, that technology without releasing the co-technology that goes with it, suppose that was supposed safer, because a lot of off-label spraying was done with the old compound, which is very cheap. Okay, now what is off-label spraying? Off-label is just an older 2,4-D version, uh, okay. which, which, which was uh, well known by every farmer uh, that it had real problems not only with drift, uh, and we call it drift, but it's uh, really uh, when uh, temperatures get inverted, which means in, if in the evenings when that cool air and the warm mm -hmm. air, uh, that chemical is a gas. Right. And that gas just kind of sits there, and when you get those evenings where the inversion temperature, it just all masses and just kind of starts to move with the little gentle breezes. So, so that drift, that dicamba drift, is what's caused a lot of problems. And Absolutely. What it means, means that the dicamba can, can float to a different part of the farm. It can float into the farmhouse, and it can also float into a neighbor's farm. Absolutely. And well, I let's, think let's take a break because we're going to see a couple of announcements, and we'll be, we will be back in just a minute. Welcome back to Green Time. I'm host Don Fitz. This episode, we're talking about Family Farm Action. With me, I have Wes Schumeyer, who is with Family Farm Action and is president of Missouri's Food for America. Wes Schumeyer, we were just talking about dicamba and how it's, it can, drift can happen. Could you tell us a little bit about how has it, has it negatively affected Missouri farmers? What's well, that? Oh, absolutely. I think if you look at one of the largest peach orchards in the state of Missouri was devastated. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, when you only have to look in, especially in the boot hill last year where there was a significant amount of that spraying done, you know, there's actually one farmer called another farmer to discuss it and uh, uh, there was a murder that occurred. Really? So this has absolutely torn communities apart. Um, and uh, so, so if one person wants to use dicamba because it helps him, right. the, and the neighbors growing peaches or, or maybe right. beans Absolutely. and beans. destroys their crops, then the two might get into it. As Absolutely. Far as that's the, what happened. And that's absolutely what happened. So we've seen some real negative impacts, especially that. And I, and, you know, and I don't condone or advocate. Nothing's that bad in life, in uh -huh. my opinion, that you can't figure out a way to work through it. However, uh, it was quite irresponsible of Monsanto, I believe, to release that technology. It, it was, there had not been enough testing. Uh, they knew that if someone was tempted to go off label, that the and, and, and off label again, off label to use, spray use the use old early, earlier version, earlier the version mm -hmm. that terrible things could happen. And when we've seen that farm prices at the farm gate have declined by uh, forty percent the last mm -hmm. few years, um, farmers are in a pinch, and they're going to try to save money. Uh, but I think what what we what we need to understand is that this is part of the age old. Uh, battle that we've had. I, uh, uh, in, in the Roundup Ready early era of that, uh, it was amazing to me that if someone else planted Roundup Ready soybeans and, and, that, and that, uh, mm. that, that gene infiltrated my land, I would be responsible. It was one of the craziest things I ever heard. Right. Uh, uh, and in fact, uh, you know, I had several uh, private investigators come to my farm from Monsanto for um, me being willing to stand up against them and me being willing to, to do it, that it's, legislatively. It's, it's, it's amazing because logic and common sense would tell you that it's the opposite. Yeah, it's in, fence in, in or if, fence you're out. if you're spraying yeah. something in your yard that causes my children to have asthma, I should be able to sue you, but no, no you could sue me because I'm letting my kids breathe your asthma causing. Absolutely. <laughs> it's like, are you, are like, I painted my house blue and my blue paint drifted over on your yellow house, and I get to sue you for my paint drifting on your yellow house. It's, it's, it's That's amazing. how it worked. Let, let, let me ask you something. You mentioned there, you thought there was insufficient testing. Of Absolutely. That, that now, now, was there a problem with, with, that some of the testers wanted to look at things like how much drift there is, and did Monsanto say, fine, you're an independent investigator, go ahead and look at how much drift there is? They said, you can look at how this stuff works. But don't look where it works, and don't really study the drift because we we think we know what's going to do. Uh, and, and, that, and that was and, a condition of letting yes, the test. It wasn't absolutely. And I and think I think uh, uh, certainly on my farm, I've suffered uh, from drift from a neighbor. What what, what's, what do you grow? Uh, soybeans, corn, and wheat. And uh, my soybeans, mm. which were not 
the, the dicamba resistant soybeans. The neighbor mm. sprayed them, and the neighbor, I'll I, I give credit, the neighbor followed the rules. The wind actually was in the opposite direction mm. when he was spraying of my field. But what happens in that in that process was that inversion process we talked a while ago. That evening, the air settled, the and and uh, the, that turned into that gas, and it just decided to head my way. Okay, I want to ask you about following the rules of spraying. One of the things that I've read and heard is that Monsanto will say the product is just fine, but these ignorant farmers <laughs> don't know how to follow the rules. Do you think it's a fair thing to say that the farmers don't know how, how to read a label and apply something? I, I, think, I think if you read the label on application, mm -hmm. it's hard to find the time when it's right to spray that stuff. It, the, with the wind, with the wind right, and the right. temperatures does, and does, the time. Does it say don't don't spray if the wind is blowing too it, much? Yeah, or two or, or three miles. It's very low rate, and it's between you know uh, between the hours of nine and three in the afternoon. Well, farming is kind of when you need to do something. You need to do something, and you know many of the farmers that grab this technology, if you will, mm. are pretty good sized farmers, uh -huh. uh, big farmers, and they have to do a lot of things at a lot of different hours than just that, that, that time frame. So, so, so is, is it fair to say if you have to, to spray when the wind is ju blowing at just two to three miles right. per hour that you might pass through a whole growing season when you wouldn't be able to do it because you have to do other things at different times? Well, the there is a, it is a very limited time frame and to follow all the rules. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't um, hit it. You could, yeah, but I think, I think you know, we need to, um, uh, certainly need to explore the, uh, uh, viability of releasing at this time. We need to explore and see the get everything in the public record mm -hmm. about the studies that were done okay. by both private studies and public studies. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that this was a, a decision that was made by this corporation because uh, it, it might be, and I'm in an intergenerational farm with my mm -hmm. father and my son, uh, and it may be very much so as my son said, well, we may just have to plan that, those, that bean for self-protection. Uh, and that's absolutely the thing that I don't want to have to do. I don't want my choices to be limited uh, as to what I do. And, and Wait, for, th th this, this gets into the whole ideology that farmers do things because of the free market. And if a, <laughs> if a farmer purchases something, it's because the farmer recognizes that it's a better product. But you're saying that a farmer may have to purchase dicamba, not because it's a better product, but because his crops will wither away and die if he doesn't purchase it. If someone else sprays and the drift hits them, you know, you'll suffer yield loss. And mm. certainly, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and no farmer wants to do this. In mm. fact, I've, I've had some farmers that, I, that have sprayed it that told me uh, their son even sells that type of product, mm. and mm. they're not living like this anymore. They're mm. not going to – it's really hard to go around and tell your neighbors, hey, I – you know, I know how hard it is for you to raise crop. I know how hard it is for me, but I just sprayed something and it really damaged your crop. No farmer. It's like telling a neighbor your cows have been out in their field for a week. Mm -hmm. No farmer wants to have to go do that with his neighbor. And I'm sure that there will be a lot of uh, uh, finger pointing. There will be a lot of insurance companies trying not to uh, back, you know, the insurance. And, of course, Monsanto, uh, when you buy these seeds, I think it's something that many people ought to understand. It's much like the contract grower. When you sign a document or a seed receipt, it's an implied contract. Okay. And the implied, implied contract, if you turn it over and look on the back, has a lot, a lot of regulations. Okay. Now, when we're talking about a, uh, an implied contract and when you're buying seeds, you, do you generally buy the seeds and the pesticide and, and the dicamba at the same time? Well, you, you can. I mean, uh, um, many farmers do it different ways. Uh, generally, you'll buy a seed from many times an individual, and it could be a, a, a dealer, a, 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 a chemical or mm -hmm. fertilizer dealer. Uh, it could be both. Uh, many people buy seed from an individual and then buy their chemicals from a uh, farm service center, if you will, somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, so they could be, it could be both. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the fact of the matter is that, you know, that, that as we said, with, when you look at these, uh, with the Bear Monsanto major, merger, we're talking about three seed companies going to own 80% uh, of, of, of all the genetics. And then we're going to see now, um, in creating those genetics, they not only sell you the seed, they're going to be the ones selling the chemical. 
And uh, my question is uh, that we should not allow that merger. We should not allow that to happen. Yeah, I was about to ask you, what do you think should be done about Dicamba? But you're talking about the uh, overall uh, oh, picture. The big, I think there's picture. a bigger picture here. Okay, it, it's not it, just Dicamba. We're going to have the 3C companies controlling the same ones that's going to be selling the chemical. And my belief as a farmer, there is innovation uh, and using less chemical and using less pesticides and using less fertilizers and figuring out mm. how to work with the ground and the earth and, mm. and, and, and the things that enter our soil mm. would be a great thing. Mm -hmm. That will not be what's driving these, these companies. Just how much money be that can make. It's because if you sell the genetics, you want to create a piece of genetics that is connected to a chemical. Mm -hmm. and, and what's your motivation? It'll be to sell more chemical. Sell mm -hmm. more seeds so I can sell more chemicals. It won't be, I want to figure out how, to, how, how this works with the ground and works mm -hmm. with the farmer uh, mm -hmm. and works for what consumers really want. Mm -hmm. uh, that won't be the goal. We need something with a goal that says, I want to figure out how Mother Nature has a lot of cures mm -hmm. for what ails us. Mm -hmm. And we've lost a lot of those, those, that knowledge. Absolutely. And, um, I, you know, and I think our, our young people are going to be demanding it. I think in a certain time that when we look at the water and the resources that we have in this country, more people are going to be demanding that. Mm -hmm. And we need to have people in control that will have those same values. And I think that's what's important, one of the things mm -hmm. of Family Farm Action. Mm -hmm. We believe in those values that uh, our water and our streams and our air are important mm -hmm. things. Not only to us farmers, that's important to where we live, but it's important to everyone on this planet. So then maybe we should be thinking of ways to break up some of these big, Absolutely. Corp big corporations. Uh, you know, Teddy Roosevelt mm -hmm. did the trust buster. We can, we've mm -hmm. done it before. So we had robber barons. Okay, so that, that's one of the things that, Absolutely. that maybe, maybe we should be looking at. Absolutely. As, as, as ways to prevent 80% of, uh, of these being controlled by only 80% uh, of the agriculture being controlled by only three, three companies. Uh, three companies yeah. is pretty amazing. The seed and the, uh, it's, it's a scary thing. It's really a scary thought to have those entities in control. And food, you know, for some people, good food is an, an object. But for many people in this country, when you really get down to it, food is sovereignty. Absolutely. And we need to make sure that we have uh, the right people that really care about our land and really care about our country and really care about our communities being in control of the production and dispersion of our food. Okay. We're going to take a break and we will be uh, see a couple of announcements and then we'll be back in, uh, very shortly to wrap up. Welcome back to Green Time. I'm Don Fitz, host of Green Time. This episode, we're talking about family farm action, and I have Missouri farmer Wes Schumeyer, who's telling us a lot of the issues that farmers are worried about, especially dicamba. Now, Wes Schumeyer, you told me that there was a website that people might want to take a look at that. A well, what is that? Absolutely, Don. It's been great to be with you, and, and mm -hmm. I think those folks who are concerned mm -hmm. uh, about the future of family farmers and their food system, uh, it's farmaction.com. U.S. And I'd encourage people to... Farm Action all, as all one word. No, no, correct. Okay, Farmaction.us. Dot okay. U.S. And I'd encourage folks to take a look at that, see what we're about. Um, I think you'll find that a lot of the values that we're espousing that, uh, in spite of your political persuasion, mm. these are values that come back to all our rural communities and things that I think we're going to have to really reinstate and work and grab our rights back uh, to get our communities back and get our wealth back in our, in our state. Now, what, what would you really like the viewer to take with them as far as the issues that we've covered in the first part of the show? Well, I think what I would really like folks to take with them is that there are, there are those goals and those values that not only affect us as family farmers, but many of the, the monopolistic tendencies that we see throughout our, our economy mm -hmm. not only affect us, but affect them too. We have just been affected by it in a more severe way. And to start thinking about food sovereignty, whenever you have those Mm -hmm. uh, foreign corporations being the largest holder of pork and beef and chicken in this country. We need to start thinking about the policies uh, that our elected officials are enacting. And, that, and that's one of the reasons for Family Farm Action is that it's, it's, a, it's time that we bring some political muscle to our rural communities. It's time that we have a voice that starts talking about bringing wealth back and retaining wealth mm -hmm. and, and understanding that we can do this. And we're just inviting people to see what we're about. Join us. We need more folks to join us. If you're a group and you want, and you're C3 and you want us to help validate your issues and we help you, we're certainly open to that. We're not here to take any place of any C3s. 
Wes Schumeyer with Family Farm Action. I want to thank you for participating in this discussion with Green Time. I want to thank everybody for tuning us in and urge you to tune in Green Time same time next week.